So we have made our proteins. Now, proteins have to be in specific part of the cell to perform their function. For example, an enzyme that is required by the mitochondria, if it doesn't reach mitochondria, it will affect the functioning of the mitochondria. Additionally, it may disrupt the function of other protein molecules in the cytoplasm. So it is very important that proteins go to their relevant destination. Before we talk about how proteins are targeted, let me tell you a little bit about prokaryotes, uh, what happens to them after the proteins are made. As we know, there are no membrane-bound organelles. Transcription and translation are happening out there in the cytoplasm. And in the cytoplasm, we also have the ribosomes. So in prokaryotes, like bacterial cells, as the RNA is elongating, the ribosomes start to assemble on them while the messenger RNA is being made and the protein starts to be formed even though the entire messenger RNA has not been transcribed yet. In eukaryotes, however, the situation is very different. That each protein that is made by the ribosomes has a special sequence of amino acids. This special sequence of amino acids tells protein where to go. If there is no special sequence of amino acids, the protein stays in the cytoplasm. However, if it has a special sequence, which is referred to as the signal sequence, the signal sequence of protein is read and it is specific for a specific organelle. So, Proteins that have to go to nucleus will have a specific signal sequence and that is recognized by cellular machinery or, or the surface of that organelle has receptors, a proteins that can bind that particular signal sequence and the protein is then transported inside that particular organelle. As we know that proteins that are destined for lysosomes or which have to be secreted out or have to be placed or embedded in the plasma membrane, all those proteins are, while they are being made, once the protein synthesis procedure starts, the whole process comes to a halt till the ribosome lands on the, the surface of ER, the rough ER, and then the process continues. And so we have two routes. Basically, one route is keeping the you make a protein and it is going to organelles inside the cell which are which include mitochondria, plastids, chlorophyll, chloroplasts, peroxisomes or the nucleus. Each specific signal sequence will specify whether this protein goes to plastid, mitochondria, peroxisome or the nucleus. No signal sequence, the protein stays right here in the cytoplasm. A special signal sequence will tell the protein, the ribosomes to stop making the protein till the ribosome docks on the surface of the ER, it injects the protein right into the lumen of ER, the space between the two membranes of uh, the ER, and this protein is then sent to the Golgi apparatus. It goes through several chemical modifications till it is secreted or sent to the lysosome. So here you can see this process in a little bit more detail. Here we have a ribosome making protein. Here's the signal sequence. This signal sequence, as soon as soon it comes out of the, the ribosome, is recognized by signal recognition particle. It binds the signal sequence. It halts the, the production of that protein. It stops the ribosome from doing the translation. And it takes them to a special pore in the, on the surface of ER. This pore, the special protein, which is making this pore, it, on this protein, the ribosome docks, and it starts making, resumes the protein synthesis procedure and protein is now injected into the lumen of the ER. There are special enzymes inside the ER which are, which can recognize that special signal sequence and they will cleave that off when the protein is injected into the ER. So in this case, it is about 20 hydrophobic amino acids at the end terminus of that protein. Remember what the end terminus is? We talked about that. So after the signal sequence has been cleaved, protein is injected into the ER and now the ER 
will have enzymes that will chemically modify this protein and send it onwards to Golgi and we know what happens from there on. Here I would like to uh, point out a very interesting experiment. This basically was done to show the significance of signal sequence. In this case, the signal sequence is NLS, Nucleus Localization Sequence, NLS. So these researchers, what they did is they took a protein called nucleoplasmin. It has, this nucleoplasmin has NLS. It is therefore sent to the nucleus. They removed the NLS from this protein and injected in the cell to see whether this protein now goes to NLS or not. With the NLS, the protein goes to the nucleus. When they did this experiment, they saw that the protein did not go in the nucleus. It basically stained the cytoplasm of the cell. Another protein, pyruvate kinase, which stays in the cytoplasm, it never goes in the nucleus. They attached the NLS to this protein and when they injected this protein in the cell, the entire protein basically accumulated in the nucleus. So this experiment clearly demonstrated that NLS is essential for nuclear protein import and is sufficient to direct a normal, normally cytoplasmic protein to the nucleus. In conclusion, I would also like to mention that there are several types of modica modifications that proteins go through after they have been synthesized. Some, for example, some proteins are chopped up, which is called proteolysis. The whole protein has, for example, may have some inhibitory domains that don't become active till they are chopped off. For capsaicins would be one example of this type of protein. We'll talk about what they are in a later uh, module. Glycosylation, addition of sugar molecules. These sugar molecules, they also serve as a labeling system for the proteins inside the ER. D different combinations of sugar molecules, carbohydrate molecules attached to the protein also determine which, uh, which, where the protein has to go. Either it is going to lysosome or going to be secreted. Phosphorylation, we have seen several examples of that, that proteins get a phosphate group attached to them, generally usually donated by the ATP. These modifications generally result in activation of a protein or inactivation of a protein. So this is basically uh, what happens to proteins after they have been synthesized.